Hello learners, welcome back to the course on labor welfare and industrial relations. If you observe that we have been going through the thick of uh, what labor welfare is specifically, we are dealing it with uh, in two parts, especially the previous module and this module. Today we specifically focus on the issues in labor welfare and social security and we will uh, look in detail about some of the welfare amenities. So, it will be sort of a review of the welfare amenities that are existing in our country. I am Dr. Abraham Sir I am an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So, when you look into uh, the issues concerned with welfare and social security, we have to first understand that though there has been a certain planning associated with different measures, we also find it critically as an issue that we also find it as an uh, uh, upcoming issue that there has been poor fund utilization and this has been not only with respect to any particular scheme. Across the schemes, we have understood this as a lacune. Another major issue is lack of adequate budgetary allocation. You know, the government is not able to uh, allocate specific funds, maybe because of the lack of funds or maybe uh, the lack of proper need recognition or the gap analysis. There are circumstances or situations of corruption and leakage that have been found out. There are also inadequate coverage and benefits aspect, budgetary cuts are there and even in a society as a whole there are technological and digital divides. So, we will look into these issues on a deeper level very quickly. So, when you look into the issues in labor, welfare and society, as I have already mentioned, the first important aspect would be the poor fund utilization and management. So, what specifically happens with respect to the fund which has been given or allocated to a particular program, that is quite a question. For example, the previous EAG audits revealed that almost 1920s and almost to the tune of 2000 crores accumulated in the national social social security fund since its inception and had been not utilized at all. So, similarly, if you look into other aspects, the cess collected for the provision of social security to construction workers in Delhi, cess collected was poorly utilized with almost I think approximately 94 percent of the money remaining unspent. So, these examples certainly indicate that there are gaps in the fund management and monitoring systems which technically results in the wastage and I should say the under utilization of public money. Please understand when you are allocating fund, it goes from the public money, but if it is not used, definitely is a case of under utilization. When you look deeper into the lack of budgetary, adequate budgetary allocation, uh, the National Social Security Fund was set up for unorganized sector workers with an initial allocation of 1000 CR, 1000 crore, which was far below the estimated requirement of I think around uh, 22,841. So, this is the required amount and this was the budgetary allocation. So, this shows that the government has not typically prioritized social security as a key component. Maybe there are different reasons, justifications, not denying that of its development agenda and has not allocated sufficient resources to meet the needs of the vulnerable sections of the society. Maybe it is not that uh, the, the allocation itself, maybe the, the utilization, poor utilization as we discussed in the previous point could also have been a leading factor when you are looking into the inadequacy of budgetary allocation. So, there could be several reasons associated with that, but the fact remains that there is a big shortfall when it comes to the budgetary allocation. If you look into the third important aspect, we cannot neglect the corruption and leakage uh, which, which stays as a big challenge even now. In the case of Haryana, where the CAG noted that the direct benefit scheme of the states, states Social Justice and Empowerment Department had uh, seen the transfer of 98.96 crore to the accounts of a deceased beneficiary. So, this suggests that uh, there are loopholes in the identification and verification of beneficiaries as well as in the delivery mechanism of these social security benefits underscoring these aspects of corruption and leakage. 
also there are instances of bribery fraud nepotism and even political interference to a certain extent in the allocation and distribution of these social security funds when you look into another important aspect it is inadequate coverage and benefits this is a persistent uh, pertinent issue of inadequate coverage because for instance let's say the contribution by the the center uh, when it comes to the welfare schemes like old age pension schemes has stagnated at rupees 200 a month since 2006 which is below the minimum wage per day if you look into that from that angle moreover the eligibility criteria for some of the schemes are very restrictive and they exclude typically many deserving beneficiaries beneficiaries for example let's say uh, the national social assistance program focuses on old age poor individuals with no able bodied earners in their household so are eligible to earn a monthly pension of rupees 75 so this leaves out many poor elderly people who may have some earning members in their household but still face economic insecurity and hardship Another typical aspect we should consider is the budgetary cuts, the reduction in budgetary allocation, especially if you look into uh, the schemes like the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. It suggests a lack of prioritization for social welfare and rural employment generation. And finally, I would go with this as one of the most significant issue in labor welfare and social security, which is nothing but the technology and a digital divide. When you look into many social security schemes specifically, they are transitioning to digital platforms. So when you look into this transition to digital platforms for uh, be it registration or disbursement of benefits, a significant portion of the population, particularly in rural areas, urban areas, people generally get attached to or start using this technology and they are more adept in using it. But especially in rural areas, a significant portion may lack access to technology and internet and all the facilities that, that uh, come with that, creating a digital divide that hampers uh, you know, their participation in these programs. And if you clinically look into the informal labor sector, approximately 91% or around 4 475 million or so of India's workforce uh, which works in the informal sector often lacks job security, it lacks all the social benefits, it lacks access to the formal social security program. So these are typically some of the critical issues that we see in labor welfare and social security. Now having understood that, we have to go deeper into some of the welfare amenities. We have looked into some of the acts, some of the policies, some of the uh, outlays or some of the schemes. Now we are looking into some of the welfare amenities typically in this class, spe specifically the rural areas and something related to agriculture labor. We have a list of it, we'll go deeper into that. But to, uh, but to understand what all are the span or what all are uh, the range of activities that the government of the day is involved in, we have the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi PM Kisan Yojana. We have the Soil Health Card Scheme. We have the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana PMFBY. We have the National Agriculture Market ENAM. We have the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana PMKSY. Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana PKVY. We have the National Food Security Mission, which is one of the flagship program of the authorities these days, which is NFSM. So please note these are Again, big list, but these are not, uh, not the exhaustive items that are there in this list. So basically, we look into the key factors, we look into the keys or the kingpin factors or kingpin uh, welfare amenity schemes and we'll review them quickly. Let's start with the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana, which is also known as the PM Kisan. It was launched in 2019. 2019, one of the flagship government uh, programs especially in the agriculture initiative. So when you are reviewing the welfare amenity specifically in rural areas with respect to the agriculture labor, we have to understand that agriculture serves as the backbone of India's economy. There is no doubt about it because it employs over half of its workforce and it certainly makes a substantial contribution to the GDP, however, though it is diminishing. So despite all of its pivotal role, 
that the agriculture or the sector is uh, playing the sector unfortunately grapples with uh, different challenges. Uh, it could be uh, something like low productivity, uh, climate uncertainties are there, fragmented uh, land holdings are there, limited access to uh, modern markets and technologies are there. So, these are some of the issues that the, the rural areas certainly faces. To address all these aspects, these challenges specifically and to bring up or uplift the agriculture community, the government of India has launched several policies over the uh, period. So, these initiatives aims to uh, boost the productivity, the farm productivity, typically enhance the agricultural infrastructure, promote sustainable farming practices. So, a document specifically by the Planning Commission of India, which had delineated the strategy and the action plan for doubling farmers' income, outlining key areas where government agriculture schemes is pivotal uh, in achieving the role. So, basically, when you look into uh, these schemes, they cover a diverse area, such as it could be anything from uh, financial support, We have financial support specifically, we have aspects of crop insurance, we have aspects related to irrigation, we have typical aspects related to soil health. So, all these aspects I will be covering with respect to the schemes. We have aspects associated with market access, which I have already talked about. We have also, uh, you know, issues concerning uh, the market linkages also when you look into the, the market access. But moreover, we have the importance of technology dissemination also coming into picture. So, these are some of the factors which, which we need to uh, acknowledge and appreciate when we review these schemes specifically. So, in India, let me, uh, let me uh, tell this very explicitly, several farmer welfare schemes have been implemented by the government to support the agriculture community and address their various challenges. Some of the key farmer welfare schemes in India, the PM Kisan or the soil health care schemes, etc., catering to all these aspects specifically. So, let us let us uh, go into detail with respect to Pradhan Mandri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana. The primary aim is to offer direct income support to small marginal farmers, recognizing the imperative of ensuring financial stability for farmers amidst various challenges. So, if you look into the, the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana specifically, what we see is that though it has a certain indication towards the financial support, the attempt is to alleviate agrarian distress and contribute to the rural prosperity. When you specifically look into the uh, PM Kisan scheme, it is eligible for farmers who receive uh, almost when you look into the PM Kisan scheme, the eligible farmers certainly receive Rs. 6,000 per year, disbursed in three equal installments of Rs. 2,000 each. So, it goes directly into the bank account and that is the beauty of the scheme. The scheme's objective is to categorically supplement farmers' income, cater to the investment requirements and also to facilitate the adoption of modern agriculture practices devoid of financial burden. So, uh, by furnishing a very stable income source, PM Kisan or the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi endeavors to alleviate agrarian distress as I have already mentioned and contribute to the rural prosperity. So, when you look into the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Yojana, these are some of the key objectives. Another important aspect or important scheme would be the, the soil health card. The soil health card scheme, yet another pivotal uh, governmental scheme was launched in 2015 and it aims to advocate sustainable and productive farming practices. So, this scheme categorically endeavors to evaluate the nutrient status of agriculture soils and certainly offer personalized recommendations to, to farmers, uh, specifically empowering them to make well-informed decisions regarding fertilizer applications or even soil uh, selection or soil amendments, etc. Even crop selection also is a part of this soil health card scheme. So, this 
is what makes the soil health card uh, scheme more robust because it, it offers tailor-made recommendations to farmers, empowering them and uh, empowering them to make the well-informed decision. So what happens under the soil health card scheme, the soil samples are collected from farmers' fields and they are meticulously analyzed for vital nutrients. It could be nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, the NPK and uh, micronutrients. So subsequently, uh, farmers receive a soil health card that uh, typically furnishes detailed information about the soil's nutrient content. And it is also attached with tailored recommendations as I've already mentioned for suitable fertilizers and even some soil amendments that are uh, required or that are vital or necessary to be carried out. So this specifically facilitates farmers in optimizing fertilizer usage, curbing input costs and enhancing crop yields while concurrently preserving soil health. So the soil health card scheme has inevitably played a vital role in championing sustainable agriculture and fostering the, the typical utilization of resources. So uh, that said, there are challenges, there are issues, notably concerning the timely contribution or timely distribution, I will say. Timely distribution of these cards have been a critical challenge specifically when you are dealing with the rural large population and also there is unfortunately limited awareness, limited awareness among the fam farmers specifically about this scheme which, which makes it another big challenge. So continuous evaluation and refinement of the scheme are imperative to address these issues and uh, typically bolster its efficacy in, in supporting soil conservation and augmenting the productivity or the agriculture productivity general. So these are some of the positive aspects and the negative aspects of the soil health card scheme. Another critical aspect is our critical uh, yojana would be the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, PMFBY. Launched in 2016, it is a significant agricultural insurance scheme. Please note, it's a significant agricultural insurance scheme specifically. Its objective is to provide crop insurance coverage to farmers against yield losses. And the yield losses could be due to various reasons. You can, you can see the Indian agriculture industry and say that there could be possibilities, there are possibilities of natural calamities. There are, uh, you know, pest problems. There are diseases affected due to pests. So Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana endeavors to alleviate the financial burden on farmers during crop failures and furnish them with a safety net typically to manage risk and uncertainty in agriculture specifically. So under this Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana PMFBY, farmers contribute a nominal premium, a nominal premium with the remaining premium equally shared by the central and the state government. So the contribution from the part of the government is significant, both the state and as well as the central government. The scheme offers comprehensive coverage spanning from, please note, pre-sowing to post-harvest risks and enables farmers to ensure the multiple crops. So claims are settled based on the crop loss assessments or conducted by the government appointed agencies, ensuring transparency and prompt compensation specifically. So this is what the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana PM FBY is all about. When you look into ENAM, ENAM is nothing but the national agricultural market. This is another important scheme of the government. It was launched in uh, the year 2016. ENAM again aims at establishing a unified national electronic trading platform for agriculture commodities. Now this increases the use of the technical uh, technological platforms and also connects more and more people into the, uh, the sector or into the network. So this platform typically endeavors to promote transparent price discovery. Please note that is the most critical aspect. The moment uh, the human interface is taken out and there is more of technological adaptation, we see that 
the the transparent pricing is happening and th this particularly promotes the transparent price discovery so it dis diminishes the role of intermediaries via medias and enhances the market access for farmers so under this national agriculture market uh, farmers can register on the platform and list their procedure along with details regarding both the quantity and the quality now this is both important because both the quantity and the quality is taken care of by such an uh, aspect or such a scheme so traders processors buyers all the segment of people or all the important stakeholders can access this information and participate in bidding for agriculture commodities so the platform facilitates a real time online auction process ensuring a critical equitable price and it typically no doubt augments the farmer's income so this is something which is the underlying benefit of the national agriculture market or what we understand as enam another important scheme of the government would be the pmksy pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana it is it was launched in 2015 again aims to enhance water use efficiency and extend uh, irrigation coverage within the agriculture sector so when you look into this particular scheme its primary objective certainly though it looks into the convergence in investments through irrigation infrastructure and ensuring integrated development of water resources it is certainly implemented through various components and those components include aibp aibp is nothing but accelerated irrigation benefit program i repeat accelerated irrigation benefit program then there is harket kopani hk kp harket kopani then uh, there is a p d m c scheme per drop more crop per drop more crop scheme and then there is there are watershed development so pmksy the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana is designed to increase the irrigated land area promote the precision in irrigation techniques that have been employed and obviously augment water productivity through efficient water management practices so when you look into the entire uh, pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana augmenting the water productivity through efficient water management practices happens to be the one of the key objective of pm ksy another important scheme of the government of the day is the paramparagat krishi vikas yojana which is also known as a pk vy launched in india in 2015 the paramparagat krishi vikas yojana is a government agricultural scheme aimed at promoting organic farming please note not only farming but organic farming practices among among the farmers while enhancing soil fertility biodiversity and environmental sustainability so all the factors of esg as well as you know the organic farming is coming into picture uh, the pkvy or the paramparagat krishi vikas yojana advocates for the adoption of traditional and indigenous farming methods so this would certainly reduce reliance on synthetic fertilizers and pesticides that is one of the key aspects of the pkvy or the paramparagat krishi vikas yojana so under this pkvy paramparagat krishi vikas yojana farmers typically receive the financial assistance over a 3 year period over a 3 year period specifically to adopt to organic farming practices so this is in a way a mechanism to facilitate more of organic farming practices so the scheme also encourages the formation of farmer clusters farmer clusters specifically or groups to collectively implement organic farming methods share knowledge about them and to increase the access of or access towards training and technical support so that is ladies and gentlemen the paramparagat krishi vikas yojana pkvy for you now you have one of the most important and critical and i will say the flagship program and which has created certainly an impact in the welfare scheme of 
the entire industrial relations and that is nothing but the National Food Security Mission or it is also known as the NFSM. Launched in India in 2007, the National Food Security Mission stands as a pivotal government endeavor aimed at certainly bolstering the production of rice, wheat and pulses. So thereby giving a boost to food security and even the price stabilization. So when you look into the objectives of the National Food Security Mission, it revolves around enhancing agricultural productivity and augmenting the availability of essential food grains. So uh, when you look into the, the population, the needs of the population, this is quite a, a relevant and critical objective. So operationalized through distinct missions for rice, pulses, wheat, this NFS, the National Food Security Mission, uh, categorically channels targeted interventions to tackle specific challenges encountered in cultivating these crops. So when you look into the scheme, the scheme certainly extends support to farmers through the provision of high yielding seeds. This happens to be the key uh, change factor, adoption of improved technology, again another critical change factor and promotion of the best agriculture practices throughout the entire scheme. So it plays a significant emphasis on water management and soil health. So we have seen how the soil health and water man management is already done, striving for sustainable and inclusive growth in the food grain production. So uh, we should also understand that when we talk a lot about the National Food Security Mission, despite its success, there are, there are different challenges that persist in NFSM's implementation, uh, including the imperative for better uh, beneficiary targeting and uh, certainly efficient input distribution. So if you undertake a continuous evaluation and uh, refinement, then NFSM can be more beneficial to reach the intended recipients and contribute effectively to the nation's overarching food security benefits. So the national uh, food security mission has emerged as uh, undoubtedly a crucial tool in propelling food grain production and ensuring sustenance for India's populace. So by furnishing the certain support to farmers and advocating sustainable uh, agriculture practices, the national food security mission plays a vital role in boosting the food self-sufficiency and advancing the welfare of millions of citizens. So when you look into the general schemes or the most popular schemes, these are some of the schemes that uh, are uh, critical or that are become that have become relevant throughout its execution. Now let's conclude it with uh, a certain look into the challenges in the implementation of welfare amenities. We have looked into the issues, we have gone through the different schemes in detail. Now let's quickly look into the challenges. The first and the foremost thing is targeting and inclusivity. We have already talked about this, so I'll just uh, you know uh, bring in that perspective the moment you have an outlay, how effectively every single individual who should otherwise come within the ambit of the scheme are getting benefited or are made inclusive, this is critical and this happens to be one of the biggest challenges. There can be issues of you know uh, technical or technological or digital divide, there are issues of access towards this the schemes or there are even uh, problems of education, literacy etc where people are not aware, there are lack of awareness uh, you know uh, emerging as a big challenge. So targeting and inclusivity has different elements and these elements are making it making all the, the critical schemes, the difficult uh, aspect to get to, uh, you know, or penetrate towards the actual needy ones. Second important aspect could be the implementation bottlenecks. So the, these schemes specifically are targeted for rural population to a certain extent. So when you're targeting rural population, there are certain bottlenecks, there are supply chain issues, there are problems with respect to the infrastructure, there are problems with respect to, again, awareness or education or literacy, there are problems with respect to you know certain
certain social stigma associated with this. There are problems associated with whether you know, um, you know, somebody is being exploited uh, by taking this and, uh, you know, others are who are the needy ones, they are not actually getting it. So, there are a lot of implementation bottlenecks also existing, which again emerges as an important challenge in the implementation of welfare amenity. The third important aspect is limited coverage. Though the attempt is to spread across the span towards the entire public, towards the entire rural sector, uh, maybe because of the sheer population or maybe because of the lesser outlay or the budgetary allocation many a time it is difficult to uh, you know it is uh, it is difficult to actually cover the entire set of uh, destined people or targeted population so this makes the entire uh, you know the schemes literally uh, redundant at times because of this limited coverage specifically we have insufficient coverage of risk because there might be certain risks that are that are uh, you know sudden that are uh, coming on an urgent basis maybe because of some natural calamities or maybe such issues which were not foreseen something like covid which was not foreseen or which had never happened so those issues there are certain insufficient coverage there are certain issues where certain sector of population or certain segment of people are not covered you know again it 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 talks about or it links to the the implementation bottlenecks and the problems including uh, problems relating to targeting and inclusivity. So, insufficient coverage of risk also becomes or comes out as an inherent challenge in this the in, in, in proper implementation of this welfare amenities. Price distortion is again another factor, you know, many a time uh, the domestic market is always uh, outweighed by the international market. There could be uh, fluctuations within the economy, outside the economy, which creates a turbulence. This turbulence could actually create price distortion. Many a time there is lack of transparency, there are issues of hoarding, there are unfair agriculture practices, there are, there are, there are problems of, uh, you know, unfair subsidizing in other parts of the globe. So, all these aspects, the poor farmer or the poor uh, person who should otherwise get benefited from the welfare scheme, is actually getting affected and finally there are lack of extension services there are certain services but how well this can penetrate and give an extension service or maybe uh, you know a, a extension of one service to another or maybe something like you have a inherent subsidiary scheme which can also be uh, taken for the benefit of the larger population these things are also absent so please note though the intention is good though there are a lot of critical factors that are uh, critical schemes that are there and th they are trying to cater to the needs and wants of people but still trust me when i say that there are certain impending challenges there are certain systemic challenges there are certain systematic challenges that are uh, that are coming as barriers or roadblocks within the implementation of these welfare schemes. So that's all from today's class. We have looked into the different schemes. We have tried to review especially the key important schemes associated with the welfare amenities. Uh, it, it has uh, notation. It has its importance in the agriculture field. It has its relevance with respect to the welfare of uh, the entire agriculture sector because lion's share of people are still working or associated with the agriculture sector. Though there are cases of disguised unemployment, not, not uh, denying the fact, but still a lot of people are still in that particular sector. So all these schemes are relevant. All these schemes are important, but they have to be understood. They have to be uh, studied in the background of the challenges of the, in the background of the bottlenecks. So this is what I would like to emphasize here. We'll see more about the welfare and we'll try to conclude the module in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Namaste.